Let's discuss architecture of a video conferencing application. Functional requirement. Users should be able to video conference one on one or in a group setting. We will begin by looking at some of the topologies for this architecture. Peer to peer connection. Two clients talking to each other directly, sending and receiving messages. Peer to peer connection again with several clients, with every client sending data to every other client and receiving data from every other client. This looks like a mesh. This is the star topology with a central hub. So clients do not talk to each other directly. Instead, they send and receive messages to and from a central hub. The protocol we will use for the video conferencing application is WebRTC, Web Real-Time Communication. A WebRTC session broadly consists of three things, signaling, connecting, and communicating. Let's look at each of them one by one. Signaling. Signaling uses SDP or session description protocol to negotiate session properties between two client endpoints. Information exchanged is IP ports that clients are available on, media types and codecs to be used. You may use a signaling server provided by your platform provider or you could write and run one of your own or you could even use a messaging service like GCM. Signaling server itself does not manipulate or change any data it simply forwards messages from one client to another. In the connecting step, network connectivity is discovered and decided. ICE or interactive connectivity establishment is a technique used to discover optimal means of network connectivity, essentially protocol and routing for peer-to-peer -peer communication with WebRTC. Each possible network connectivity option is called ICE candidate. Peers propose ICE candidates over the signaling server to each other until they agree on one. Discovery of possible ICE candidates is done with the help of ICE servers, STUN and TURN. STUN stands for Session Travel Utilities for NAT. STUN servers help clients find their public IP and port. This can be communicated to other clients over signaling server. Turn traversal using relay NAT. When two clients are not able to communicate with each other because of the way networks are laid out, they take the help of a turn server. It's a relay or a proxy that allows clients to exchange media traffic. A turn server could be provided by a platform provider or you could run one of your own. Let's look at the communication step where media and data streams are exchanged. A typical WebRTC session will contain media streams and data streams. Media streams carry video and audio, while data streams carry any arbitrary text like chat messages. Media streams use RTP, RTCP protocols secured with SRTP. Data stream uses SCTP protocol secured with DTLS. In this diagram, you can see where these protocols fit in. What happens when there are lots of clients? Peer-to-peer -to -peer topology will not scale. It would be too expensive in terms of bandwidth and processing requirements on the client side. We need to use star topology. Star topology with media server as a hub. Here the clients do not talk to each other directly. They send their outgoing streams to the media server and receive incoming streams from the media server. The media server could be SFU or MCU. Let's learn more about that. Here the media server is an SFU selective forwarding unit. Every client sends an outgoing stream to the SFU and receives multiple incoming streams from the SFU. So the SFU essentially orchestrates 
the received and sending of media streams from various clients. No encoding decoding of media happens on the SFU and dynamic screen layouts are possible on the client's UI because it is in receipt of multiple streams. This is a variation of SFU called simulcast SFU. Here each client sends multiple streams of different quality to the SFU. The SFU in turn forwards a stream of appropriate quality to the receiving client depending on the network bandwidth it can support. Therefore, each client receives the highest quality stream that it can handle. Here we replace the SFU with an MCU, a media control unit. MCU combines multiple incoming media streams into a single outgoing stream. Each client sends and receives one media stream to and from the MCU. This is a bandwidth friendly option since every client is dealing with only two streams, one outgoing and one incoming. Of course, MCUs need to be powerful. They will be CPU intensive machines. A single media server cannot scale beyond a point. So we can use multiple media servers. Let's take a look. So here we can see multiple media servers. These could be SFUs or MCUs. In addition, we have a media request broker. Now clients need to know which media server to connect to. This is where media request broker comes in. It assigns meetings and clients to media servers based on some logic. For example, geographic proximity to clients. And remember that media servers could be spread geographically. If you were using AWS cloud, you would have media servers across regions. And with a suitable implementation, you could even have meetings span across media servers. All of this helps us scale massively. Let's see what our overall architecture looks like. We have already seen most pieces of this architecture. Let's look at the new items here. We have a web server which can host web pages for client to download and display a UI. If you want to interface with a SIP client, you can do that via a WebRTC SIP gateway and a SIP server. Media server can also send data to an analytics engine, which in turn may use a database to store information. To record meetings, media server can send a feed to a storage server. If you were using AWS Cloud, storage could be S3. So this is what overall architecture of a video conferencing application may look like. Thank you.